Hey guys, today I wanted to show you this Sunset Prestige Models 210L. Uh, it's the Frisco version, uh, like the Frisco Russian that was built by Baldwin for the Russian railroads. And then there was a big badge that was bought up by the Susquehanna, uh, the Erie, the Frisco, and a bunch of other ones. This one specifically is the Erie. As you can see by the mark on the box, it is factory painted as well. Uh, I got this locomotive very recently, and I wanted to do a conversion to the Susquehanna, because I have a Susquehanna diesel, but I don't have a Susquehanna uh, Erie anything. So I wanted to do that, so it kind of matched it, and, you know, I had two engines from the same railroad, and I could kind of put them on the layout together and run them. So that's why I got this one, but uh, you can see the box has some interesting wear where someone must have left it under a box. So, uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, let me just adjust the camera. Uh, so here we have the tender. So I believe this is a smaller tender. I saw pictures of it had a larger tender, but I don't know. It's got some Katie. It's got a Katie on there. Nice tender. Uh, no sound holes, which is surprising, because I believe this locomotive was made in the early '90s. Maybe just they didn't. I don't know, but doesn't matter. It's a nice paint job. Uh, I always like the little eerie emblem. It looks nice. Uh, here we have the locomotive itself. Uh, very nice. Uh, limited back head detail. Uh, you can see the gearbox in there. Super cute little engine. Tiny drivers, so. Uh, you be careful. So, yeah, it's got it like in the number boards. Uh, no light, but it's nice. No sound cam, but uh, this is made in Korea. I think it was made by like SMI, I mean, that's what I saw online. I don't, I haven't seen that brand before, but really nice engine. Uh, can, I'm gonna put it on the track. Uh, I'll be it. So now that I have this on my layout, uh, you can see it looks very nice. Uh, with these Sunset Prestiges, I, I think they run very well. I have a K4 behind me uh, that has a redone boiler uh, by Sunset Prestige because if you've ever seen one of those and you know anything about K4s, you know uh, it doesn't look like a K4. It looks like a K3 almost, but I digress. Uh, this locomotive is very small, I find it, like, comparatively. <laughs> If, if I get my engine, if I get another engine over here, you can see that is a Penzi I-1. You can see just how much bigger it is. I mean, I mean like the cab's the same height, but like just the thickness of the boiler, I mean, like that, like, it's almost double the thickness of the boiler on that but this locomotive has a cam motor because it's you know i think it was built in 1991 uh, i believe could be right could be wrong but which i'm surprised by because it doesn't have any lights in it most engines from then have lights in them but i don't care i can put lights in so as I said earlier, this locomotive has an Erie, and I want to convert it to a Susquehanna because I have a Susquehanna RS1 over there, and I think it'd be cool to have that engine, and it's like that, uh, but it doesn't matter. So we turn it on, makes that a lovely sound. So a few videos ago, I got a comment on one of my videos about how running this, running this train or trains like this without decoders on a DCC power pack is not good for them. Now that is 
somewhat true, it's not entirely true. If I leave it like this for hours on end, yes, the motor may burn out or overheat and seize up. But if I'm running it, it's, it should be fine, unless I'm running it for hours on end. Like, if I, I've run some of these for 40 minutes, just in a loop, and nothing has gone bad. I and mean, then on the older ones like that I won with the original motor, which was a big old Pitman, I think. Though so that would overheat, but with these newer can motors, I mean, it's, it should be fine. I mean, if like it's shorting, like I had an engine that I left that was shorting, so the power pack didn't turn off, which was annoying, so I left it for a few hours. And uh, the motor was crispy, to say the least. So, I'm not too worried about it, but I might just give it like a little one, but I don't really care. So, let's see how this thing runs. So, how my track is set up, but I have the forward set on the digit track, so it looks like that. You can see, uh, it goes backwards, just how the rail pickup set up. So, and if I go on the inner track, it's, I think, the same way, because I have them set up the same way. We'll just go for a little. Something interesting is, I'm going to show you. On these, it doesn't move till 9, which I never understand why. But you can see there. Oh, sorry about that. Just have a little bit of rubber, have rubber bottoms on this. It's a little bit noisier in reverse than it is going forward. But I mean, look how that runs super smoothly. So, uh, I'll just include some flyby shots, I guess, and then that will be the end of the video. Uh, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.